Hey guys, you're back with Lisa Marie Johnson for a verse of the day. So we will start with the pastor. Hi, I'm Joyce Meyer, and I want to talk to you today about God's desire to help you at all times in every area of your life. Psalm 121, 1 and 2 says, I'll lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. You know, it's so awesome to think about how God, who is all-powerful, all-knowing, and always with us, wants to be involved in everything in our lives. I remember a time when he opened my eyes to this truth. Back in the 1970s, I used to bowl in a league on Friday nights. And one night when I wasn't doing very well, I really thought I heard the Lord speak to my heart, ask me to help you bowl. Well, I immediately thought, I can't ask you to help me bowl. But the thought remained, so I went ahead and prayed. Okay, Lord, please help me bowl better. And he did. Well, this may seem like a silly example, but it impacted me in a powerful way. It made me realize that God cares about every single part of my life. God loves you very much, and he wants to have an intimate, personal relationship with you so you can live with his peace and joy. God wants you to learn how to do life with him, and that means... You lean and rely on him in all things, no matter how small or big they may be. The truth is we need God's wisdom and strength in everything in order to be our best. And if we truly understand that, we'll be more mindful to trust him to help us at all times in all things. So what do you need God to help you with today? How can you trust him more and do life with Jesus as you go through your day? <clears throat> scripture <clears throat> my help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth that's Psalms 121 verse 2 reflect how can you look to God for help in times of trouble I can read what his word says about my problem before I talk to anyone else I can pray continuously for God's help throughout my day. I can ask him to fill me with peace and wisdom to help me deal with the situation. Or you can add your own response. I would say mine would be a combination of all three. I will say I can ask him to fill me with peace and wisdom to help me deal with the situation. That's what I would say. Okay, devotional. Build a culture of courage. Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the commitment to overcome it. Courage doesn't mean you're not afraid. It means you battle against your fear and confront it. Courage pushes you to resist the impulse to shy away from things that stir up your innermost anxieties. Courage is required and must be constant. It's a tiny piece of fear all glued together. It's all it's tiny pieces of fear all glued together. The lives of great Christians leaders, Christian leaders, teach us that those who follow a God-sized calling need God-sized courage. Abraham left his home to journey to a place he wasn't even sure existed. Moses overcame his speech impediment to lead the people of Israel to freedom. Joshua faced doubters who feared the promised land was too difficult to conquer. Gideon led an army of only 300 to defeat an army of thousands. Daniel and Esther displayed tremendous courage in the face of death. Nahum. Nehemiah, I don't know, overcame fierce opposition to rebuild the, wall, the walls of Jerusalem in 52 days. Jesus faced the cross and triumphed over death. Paul penned, part, penned parts of the New Testament while nurturing wounds in prison. And nearly every apostle pre preached the gospel until being martyred. martyred. Here are some helpful tips for building a culture of courage in your organization. <clears throat> I thought these were pretty helpful. 
So these are tips. Set scary standards. Your level of experience excellence and expectation for your product or service or experience should almost be something that is nearly untainable. Safe goals are set by safe leaders with safe visions. Give your people a goal that scares them and you'll produce leaders who know what it means to overcome fear. Allow for failure. The road to success is many times put together through multiple failures. Allow for and even encourage your team to fail as they attempt to succeed. Reward innovation. Innovation requires task risks and bold risks create bold team members. Regarding innovation will challenge your team rewarding for innovation will, go, will challenge your team to grow in their roles. Pursue the right opportunities. Not every risk is a good one. Be disciplined. Aggressively pursue a few things that make sense. Say no often. Lean to delegate. <clears throat> Learn to delegate. This is one of the most courageous things a leader can do. Entrusting others with important tasks requiring, requires letting go and relinquishing control. <clears throat> Liberally pass responsibility and authority to your team. If you want your team to be courageous, give them the chance to lead. And last, the prayer. God, I am so grateful that I can look to you in times of trouble. Thank you for being my constant. Thank you for being my constant help during challenging times. When I don't know what to do, I ask you to guide me and fill me with your peace and wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.